الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى عليه وصحبه وسلم أما بعد أحب في الله continue on in our series about uh, tahara, uh, purification and prayer uh, some of the fiqh, basic fiqh rulings uh, I thought it was important even though we're going to talk about it more in detail in Imam Fozan's book but there's been several questions about the issue of certain types of najasa and the hukum regarding that. So I thought it would be beneficial for us to go through this as quickly and briefly as possible with some of the adilla from the book and the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam. The rulings of najasa, uh, najasa meaning, uh, which najasa is the, or najasat is the plural of najasa. And najasa, it refers to, or najasat, refers to impurities, those things which are impure. Uh, and that means everything that normal people, or the average person, or is of the custom, consider unclean or impure, which they seek to avoid, which they wash from their garments, and if it, if, and if it affects them, such as feces uh, and urine. So, uh, meaning that if it gets on their, it can get on their clothing and it comes out of their body, akramakum akramak Allah, uh, from feces and urine. So all of that is a, a general uh, definition of uh, najasa or najasat. Uh, the original state of things as is known from the generality and the particulars of the purified Islamic law is purity, meaning the asl of things, the asl, the origin of things, is that they are pure. This book is pure. Um, this mouse is pure. This phone I'm using is pure. All of these things, the asl is that it's pure. Earth, dirt, uh, our clothing, uh, what have you, the oils um, that we use, like for example, um, black seed oil I use sometimes, or using um, uh, olive oil, things like this, put that in my beard. These things are, the asl of them is they're pure. Uh, so the asl of things is pure, uh, according to Islamic law. And there is no doubt that when a thing is ruled to be impure, this requires a ruling of obligation upon, uh, this requires a ruling of obligation upon the slaves. And the basic principle is freedom from that, especially in things which are deemed to be a general necessity. So when there is no evidence to show that something is impure, it is not permissible for any of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's slaves to rule that it is impure based on nothing more than invalid opinion or faulty evidence. So basically what this is saying here, Habitavila, is that as we mentioned, the origin of things is, is purity. And as we mentioned uh, prior to this in the last sitting, that you know one of the uh, base principles is that the asl of things uh, is that uh, ibaha, that uh, the asl of mu'amalat is ibaha. Okay, of transactions and so forth is that they are permissible illa unless there comes evidence from the book of the sunnah there comes some dalil to show that those things are impermissible okay and from the types of adilla and the scholars even differ about adilla what makes a adilla but we know that if it's a nas qur'aniya you know it's a, a text from the quran or an authentic text from the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or the third level is uh, ijma you know that there's consensus of the scholars uh, the first ijma is the the, the ijma of the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum ijma'in and then after the death of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or after the time of the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum ijma'in from the scholars of that time uh, that would be they made up the what is considered a consensus and even this has many 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 in-depth details and about its validity and so on and so forth but anyhow that is what that is uh, another level of evidence the fourth level to some of the fuqaha is analogy is qiyas and so we make taqyid or restrict that to qiyas uh, a sound qiyas, you know, qiyas sahih, you know, that's authentic qiyas, not qiyas uh, facet, meaning, uh, you know, a, a, a false, a falsified analogy or an analogy that's just 
not based on strong criterion. So anyhow, those are the levels of adilla. So we need adilla to show that something is uh, from mu'amalat is muharram, or we need adilla to show evidence to show that something is impure. So the asal is is it's pure. The opposite of ibadah, so this is a chance for us to talk about that really quickly, is that ibadah, worship, the asal of, uh, of, of worship is al mana uh, Is that worship, the asal in its origin is impermissible. It's impermissible to worship. Illa, except something that is affirmed from the book and the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. So unless there's sharia-based evidence, then the asl of ibadat, uh, i, uh, ibadat or ibadat is that it is al-mana, is al-mana, that it is impermissible unless there's evidence to show that it is mishroor, that it is a legislated act of worship. So it's the opposite of mu'amalat and it's the opposite of, uh, you know, if we make some relationship between purity and impure, that everything is uh, pure. So, from the types of impurity, uh, is here in human urine. Uh, this is based on the hadith of Anas ibn Malik, عنه, who said, A Bedouin stood up, قام عرابي فبالا في الطائفة المشيد فزجره الناس فقال لهم رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم دعه فإنه إلى آخر حديث. A Bedouin stood up and started urinating in the masjid. The people caught him. So the people, you know, فَزَجِرُهُ nas, You know, there's different narrations. But the people, they, you know, berated him and they started to grab him. You know, can you imagine someone getting up and peeing in the masjid? Uh, but the Prophet wasallam ordered them to leave him. Da'ahu. Leave him. Uh, and فَسُبَّ ala ala bolihi سِجْلٍ min ma, O ذُنُوبٍ min ma. So... Uh, the Prophet ﷺ said, leave him and pour a bucket of water over the place where he passed urine. So from this hadith is just one of the evidences that what? Urine is uh, is impure. So we know from this hadith and other evidences that urine is impure. And that's the shahid. That's what we want to talk about. We don't want to get into all the ahkam and all the fawa'id and benefits of that hadith or it'll be a long uh, discussion. Uh, human feces, defecation. This is also impure. Uh, and this is based on the hadith of Abi Huraira, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, uh, who said, if any of you puts his shoe in something harmful, then dust will purify it. Letting us know that to dust the shoes, uh, you know, rubbing your, your sandals and checking, you know, trying to get the najas off in the dirt, that that's a way of impure. Uh, of uh, removing the impurity and so what we learn from that is that anything something harmful this is in re reference to like defecation and other things uh, also another hadith uh, another hadith of Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala he said if he puts his hoofs in something harmful then dust will purify them and this is also showing uh, this impurity that's referred to in this hadith is referring to things like defecation so from this is uh, uh, an evidence to show that defecation is what? Is impure. Another form of impurity, this is getting to some of the important things for some of us, al-madhi, al-madhi. Because in a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi uh, wasallam, first, al-madhi, the fluid that is secreted at the time of sexual foreplay or kissing, it is secreted by both men and women. The Arabic verbs meaning to secrete this substance are uh, al madha uh, amdha, or madha. Uh, and it is reported on the authority of Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Uh, an Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu ta'ala anhu qal, kuntu rajalin madha'in, fastahiyaytu an asala rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam bi makan ibnatihi minni. فَأَمَرْتُ عَلَى مِقْتَالِ ابْنِ أَسْوَدِ فَسَأَلَهُ فَقَالْ يَغْسُلُ ذَكَرُهُ وَيَتَوَضَّعُ So this is a beautiful hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam which gives us this hukum. So it was reported on Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu ta'ala that he said, I used to be a madha'in, you know, meaning kathrata madhi, that he had kathra, that he used to have a lot of this, uh, basically what we would say is pre-cum, pre 
Come, Akrama So I, I use, I asked a man to ask the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam about it, as I was shy to do so because of my position with respect to his daughter, because he was the son-in-law of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam radiyallahu taala He said, meaning the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, yaqzalu dhakaru wa yatawadu, wash your penis, Akrama Allah, and uh, make wudu. So this shows us what? Uh, this is one of the evidences that al al medvi, al medvi meaning the precum, pre ejaculation, is najis, and the hukum for removing it is that you wash your private part, and and then you make uh, wudu, wash the private part, and make wudu. So for the precum, pre ejaculation, wash your private parts and make wudu. Uh, and then there is al 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 wadi. This is a fluid secreted uh, secreted following urination by some men. It is also known as al al wadi. I think it's al wadi or it's al al wadi. Uh, it's al wadi. Uh, it is impure. The evidence for which is the consensus of the scholars. So here that we're looking at the adilla of the ijma. Uh, Imam Anoui said the scholars of the of, of the Ummah are in absolute agreement that al Midi and al and al Wadi are impure. Uh, Imam Bayhaqi narrated on the authority of Ibn Abbas anhu that he said al Mini, al Midi, and al Wadi are uh, uh, as for al Mini, al Mini, al Mini meaning sperm, uh, it requires ghusl. Okay, so if someone totally ejaculates, they have sperm. Uh, then they must make ghusl. Uh, while the other two necessitate al wudu. So the other two, al wadi and al 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 medi, meaning the pre cum and al al wadi, that they require that a person makes wudu. A person should wash his private per- parts and pr- his private part and perform wudu. Uh, and this is a uh, as we mentioned, and we'll talk more about what constitutes this in when we get into this uh, in our study of Imam Fozan's book. Also, another type of impurity is dog saliva, and this comes from the hadith of Abi Huraira, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who uh, reported that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ida walaga al kalbu fi ina i ahdakum falyarqu and there's many narrations of this hadith. If a dog licks a vessel belonging to any one of you, he should pour it away and then wash the vessel seven times. And in another hadith, the first time with dirt. So letting us know that it's actually eight times, uh, you know, uh, or that the one of the times is with tarab, is with tarab, is with the dirt. Uh, and also from the types of uh, impurities is menstrual blood, menstruation blood from the women uh, as is narrated based upon the hadith of uh, Asma ibn uh, bint Abi Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhuma who said a, a woman asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Ya Rasulullah O Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam what should we do if the blood of menses falls on our clothing? The Prophet said, If the blood of menses falls on the garment of any one of you, she must take hold of the blood spot and rub it. Then wash it with water and pray in it. So what is the shahid here? The point of mentioning this hadith is showing us that menstrual blood is uh, najis. It is um, it is impure. It's a type of impurity. Also the dung of animals whose flesh may not be eaten uh, meaning for example animals that are not halal for us to eat then that means their dung their their uh, their waste product their defecation if you will is impure so a bird for example an eagle which we can't eat uh, his uh, his waste if it spills on your clothes you should remove it because it's an impurity but if it was something that is halal to eat, a bird that's halal, um, say for example, you got chicken, 
uh, or goat or cow dung even or uh, that uh, if it got on your clothes you should clean it because it's mustakhbath it is filthy but it is not an impurity as long as those animals are lawful for you to eat so that's that's something uh, which is important for us to understand and this is based on the hadith of Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala the Prophet sallallahu alayhi went out to relieve himself and asked me to bring three stones I found two stones and searched for the third but could not find it so I took a dried piece of dung and brought it to him he took the two stones and threw away the dung and said hadha rix uh, this is rix meaning this is uh, filth um, and there are other evidences to show this so animal dung that is from an animal that is impermissible to eat is considered nudges because there's a difference and this is what we want to learn and benefit from this is there's a difference between something being nudges being uh, impure as a hukum shar versus something being mustakhbath something that being uh, just you know detestable and gross according to a particular culture or something so they, they have a, a a difference the what we're concerned about is that which is nudges so that way we know how to deal with that is it absolutely wajib to remove it or not those those kind of masail begin to come into play there uh, another type of uh, naj uh, najasa is the carcasses of dead animals so when we have uh, the carcasses of dead animals uh, as the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned and we talked about it yesterday is that uh, that that it requires that what will make it pure is by tanning according to some of the ahadith uh, of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi Wasallam so it lets us know that if tanning makes it pure that means its state prior to tanning was impure so meaning dead animals the carcasses of dead animals that normally we wouldn't be able to eat or what have you and benefit from if they are tanned we can benefit from them according to some of the fuqaha and uh, and the evidence seems uh, most apparent uh, leaning towards that permissibility some uh, benefits so that we have an idea uh, for one a Muslim does not become impure upon death so even though a Muslim is dead uh, deceased that he does not become pure because the Prophet Sallallahu said Subhanallah in al Muslim la yanjas that verily he said glorify be to law verily a believer does not become impure likewise the hair and body parts of a Muslim do not become impure by being disconnected from the body so that's another important point uh, dead fish and locust are not impure because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said Ahillalana Maytan would demand for Ammal Maytan Fil Hutu Wal Jirad Wa Amma Demand Fil Kibdu Wattihal. The Prophet Alayhi Salatu Salam said two dead things and two kinds of blood have been made permissible for us. Two dead things and two types of blood. As for the two dead things, they are the fish and the locust. While as for the two ki uh, kinds of blood, they are the liver and the spleen. Uh, this is an authentic hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Also, dead things which do not have flowing blood and are pure, such as a bee, the ant, the beetle, the fly, the scorpion. Uh, these are also not considered najis. Because why? They don't have uh, flowing blood. You know, they're just uh, small creatures, if you will, or insects, and they do not have uh, the flowing blood. And also, uh, um, another thing which is accepted from us, which means it's not impure, the bones, horns, hooves, feathers, hair, milk or rennet of dead animals are pure this is because the basic principle in all these things is pure is purity and there is no evidence for them to be impure imam al-zuhri said regarding the bones of dead creatures such as elephants and other animals i've seen people among the early scholars who use them as combs and daub themselves with them and they did not see any objection to it 
Hamad said there is no objection to using the feathers of dead birds. Ibn Sarin and Ibrahim said there is no objection in trading ivory. So these are just some of the uh, statements of the scholars of the past regarding the things like the bones, horns, hooves, feathers uh, of dead animals uh, being pure because there isn't any sound evidence uh, to su support that they are being uh, impure. A uh, last point, the impurity of the meat of an animal whose flesh may not be eaten if it is slaughtered. Okay, The impurity of the meat of an animal whose flesh may not be eaten if it is slaughtered. This is based on the hadith of uh, Salma ibn Aqwa who said on the evening of the day in which Khaybar was conquered the people lit many fires and the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said what are these fires for what purpose are you lighting them they said to cook meat he said what meat they said the meat of domestic donkeys he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said throw away what is in the pots and break the pots a man said oh messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam may we throw away what is in them and wash them he said you may do so in another version he said wash them uh, also in the hadith of Anas who said we obtained some donkey meat on the day of Khaybar and the caller of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam announced verily Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam forbid you to eat donkey meat for it is unclean or impure this is authentic hadith so there we have uh, authentic uh, evidence to show that the donkey meat um, is impure and from this the scholars make analogy make qiyas that other animals whose flesh may not be eaten normally is also considered impure and so those are just some of the benefits that we can gain uh, and and know about najasa and we ask Allah the almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil